never thought I would have to bury my children. I always thought that my children would bury me when I got older. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new to my channel, I am Key. This is Key's Playing Life. So really quick, y'all. I don't know about you guys, but I am learning as I get older that life insurance, having life insurance is really important. And a lot of us feel like just because we have life insurance on our job that we're safe, that we don't have anything to worry about. And in some cases that may be true, but in a lot of cases, that life insurance at your job not given what it's supposed to be given. So you need an outside life insurance. So what me and my husband have done, we have decided to get outside life insurance. We both have life insurance at our jobs that we pay on that comes out of our checks monthly. I have accidental uh, debts. I have life insurance. I have um, a short term illness, long term illness. I have all those things. So we're covered if something was to happen while we're working. But if event you lose your job, you still going to need life insurance. And some jobs don't give you life insurance after you're not with the company. Well, majority. Now, they do give you the option sometimes to keep the insurance and you just pay for it yourself versus it coming out of a paycheck because you're no longer with the company. But I just feel like it's best to not only have that life insurance, but have outside life insurance. And I definitely have my reasons why of telling you guys this and we're going to get into that. So you're probably like, girl, why are you preaching to us about life insurance? I'm preaching to y'all about life insurance because I 100% feel like it's really, really important. And we do not talk about that um, as much in the black communities as we should. Now, granny, everybody should have life insurance, whether you're black, white, Mexican, Indian, Arabian, whatever, Chinese, I, everybody should have life insurance. But I feel like our culture does not talk about like having life insurance as much and we don't take it as seriously as we should take it. And I was one of those people that never took it seriously. And looking back, um, I should have. And nobody told me that. And at 21, 22, how old was I? I was probably 23. I was... About 23, 24, uh, when life was started lifening and it happened in a way that I never imagined it could happen. Um, and I found out really quickly how important life insurance was. And all those times I would deny that my job, I should have had it. And um, I say that because a lot of you guys know I lost two children. So altogether, I've had five children. Um, I had a daughter named Destiny and a daughter named Keyshawn. Today is July the 1st. Destiny would have been 23 years old. Keyshawn would have been 25 years old. Um, so I lost my girls to a drunk driver. We're not going to get into the logistics of that. Let's just say they were not with me. They were taken. Um out of town without me knowing without my permission without me knowing and that person has to live with that every day knowing they took took my child took my children out out of town without notifying me even though they lied about it and said that they had talked to me knowing they didn't so <laughs> we're not going to get into that because i'm healed from that i've i've asked god to take that anger away from me and i'm good um but a drunk driver hit them as they were on their way out of town. And I got that call at six something in the morning saying my kids had been in an accident. And I was like, okay, that's no problem. Uh, it's probably, you know, at first as a mother, you're like, oh God, my children been in an accident. So I immediately called my mom and I'm like, mama, they said the kids been in an accident. My mom was like, oh, it's probably a little fender bender. They probably on their way back home. It's probably nothing. Don't worry. Don't worry. Well, my ex in laws, my ex my ex cousin in law, and my ex aunt in law pulled up to my house around I think it was around seven something, maybe eight o'clock in the morning, and I'm looking at them in their faces, and they're they had been crying. They were still crying when they pulled up, and I can remember as big as day when they said, 
one of them didn't make it. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, who didn't make it? And they were like, because I was looking for the children, because I'm thinking they're bringing the children to me. And they were like, one of the kids didn't make it. I immediately remember falling. That's all I remember. I remember falling down because I wasn't believing what was being told to me. And all I can remember is calling my mom, number one. I called my mom. And all I can remember is saying, mom, she killed my babies. Mama, she killed my babies. And I, I remember saying, mama, they say one's still alive. And she say, which one? And not that it mattered, but she said, which one? Because she didn't know what else to do. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm on my way to the hospital. Because I'm thinking automatically that the youngest, which is Destiny, today she would have been 23. I'm thinking she didn't make it because she was smaller. And I'm thinking it was Keyshawn that made it. So that's naturally what's in my mind. I'm expecting when I get to this hospital to see Keyshawn. I'm dealing with the fact that one of my children didn't make it. I'm thinking it's Destiny that didn't make it. Um, so we get in the car. I call my cousin Keith, the guy rest her soul because she loved my kids. She died. She died giving birth. Um, I called her. She was on her way to Louisiana. She said, I say, I just, Keith, I need you. I need you. At this time we were beefing. Like we were upset with each other, but she was like, I'm on my way. Hold on. I'm coming. I'm on my way. I get to the hospital. My mom is in Dallas. She's catching a flight to get to me. Um, when I walk in there into that hospital, I remember clear as day. I remember walking in the hospital and I see Destiny laying in that bed. My heart is breaking. My heart is breaking because the realization is that Keyshawn didn't make it. But I'm also looking at my baby over here on this bed, lifeless. She has machines on her just breathing, helping her breathe. My godmom is there. My ex-husband's people is, are there. My first husband, y'all know I've been married three times. My first husband's people, his cousin and his aunt that brought me to the hospital is there. My boyfriend at the time is there. Um which is Audrey's dad is there. Um, and you probably like your husband. Yeah. He had went to jail. We went together. We were not together, <laughs> um, but that's a whole different story. Um, and I remember watching my baby, let the machines help her breathe. I couldn't take it. I walked out the room. They sat us in this place, in this um, area, for nothing but family. I'm waiting on my mama. Because I don't know. I, I'm, I'm 23, 24 years old. This is. I don't know. So. I'm waiting on my mom to get there. Because all she been saying is. I'm on my way. Hold on. I'm on my way. At that time. I had not really talked to my mom. Me and my mom had not had the best relationship. Um, I wasn't really talking to my mom. But then, too, I was in an abusive relationship that I felt kept me away from my mom. We're not going to talk about that right now, neither. Um, so, my mom finally made it from Dallas. My godmama had went to go pick her up from the airport. They got back to the hospital. But before they had even got back to the hospital, let's back, let's uh, rewind. Before they had got to the hospital, my brother-in-law, both of my brother-in-laws had came. Uh... Two of my other cousins, cousin in laws had came. And my both of my brothers loved my daughters. I still call them my brothers to the day, even though they were my brother in laws. Both of them loved my girls. They helped me take care of my girls. They loved my daughters. And as soon as I seen my brother in law, I just collapsed in his arms and like Keyshawn gone. My baby gone. I'm hysterically crying. He holding me up. They're like, what? Because they can't believe what's going on. They're not believing what I'm saying. And they're like, we're Disney. I'm telling them Disney's in there. My uh, friends from my job, one of my best friends, and my other friends from my job had came up there to make sure I was okay. Um, I'm 
I have this huge fog around me. I'm not knowing what's going on. Part of me is there. Part of me is not there. It's a, I'm a ball of confusion. I'm trying to figure out how this can happen. My, my ex-mother-in-law's church people came up there. They didn't ask how my kids was doing. They didn't ask how I was doing. They didn't ask nothing. They just asked where, she, where my ex-mother-in-law was. I didn't know where the hell she was. I wasn't even worried about where the hell she was. I could care less about where she was. No shade, no tea. Now, when they found my girls, which I later on found out, she shunned out on impact. Whatever she hit, it killed her instantly. Um, Destiny, they had to resuscitate her over 12 times just to get her to the hospital. Destiny was still in the car when they found her. The car had split open. Keyshawn was ejected from the car. It took her... Now, I know this might be a little graphic. And I'm sorry if it's a little graphic, but whatever hit her would act as if it was a razor to her body. Um, the drunk driver was fine. He got up, no broken bones, no nothing. The guy that my mother-in-law was with that she wasn't supposed to be with, he died on impact too. Kicker was, his last name was Brown. My children's last name was Brown because they were named after their father. They thought they were his kids. They didn't realize that they were my kids. Um, Audrey was immediately taken to the morgue. I mean, not Audrey. Keyshawn was, because Audrey's named after both of her sisters, so I apologize. Keyshawn was automatically taken to the morgue. So... The police say they stayed with her. He, rested, he reassured me that he did not leave till they came and got her. He stayed on the scene till, yeah, till they came and got her. And he was like, he was like, she had the most beautiful hair. She, you can tell she was a beautiful little girl. He said, I promise you, I stayed with her until they came and got her. And Audrey, like I said, they had, I mean, Destiny, I'm sorry. Destiny, they had to resuscitate her 12 times just to get her to the hospital. So by the time she went to the hospital, she was on the breathing machine. My mama finally made it to the hospital. That was my first time. My mom's first time. She had seen Keyshawn, but she had never seen Destiny. So the first time she seen Destiny, Destiny was laying on a hospital bed with tubes running through her body. Now, the kicker is, Disney did not have any scrapes. She did not have any bruises. She looked it normal. So, in my mind, my daughter's going to get up. I, it's going to be okay. Because she don't have no bumps. She don't have no scrapes. She don't have no bruises. She ain't nothing. Just like she would normally be. And they put us in this room. And they explained to us what was going on. They said that our, whatever Disney hit in the car. It took the bones in her skull and went through her brain. So there was nothing but air going through her brain. So whatever she hit was enough impact to cause brain damage. That's why I said, keep your kids in car seats. I'm a stickler for seatbelts and car seats like never before. You cannot get in my car unless your child has a seat car seat or you, you in a seatbelt, grown or not. So because of them not being in car seats, not that it would have saved them, but it could have. Because she didn't put my children in car seats, my children ended up losing their lives. And they were like, do you want me? They were like, they couldn't do surgery because even on surgery, she was gone. There was nothing that they were, could, could do. They were really keeping her alive for me to get there and say my goodbyes to my child. She was gone already. If they did surgery, she was going to stop breathing on the table. There was nothing they could do. She was brain dead. And I can remember my mom talking to my pastor and I can remember I can remember my mom saying do you trust me and I'm like yeah mama I trust you because although we weren't talking I trusted my mama especially when it came to my kids and she was like you gotta let her go and I'm like I don't want to let her go and my mom was like you have to let her go she's not here anymore and I lost it I lost it I lost it I lost it and I can remember telling my mom, you have to do it. I can't do it. So I remember going in the room and I remember asking the doctor, if she breathes on her own, when you take the tubes off, will you hook her back up? And the doctor say, 
she's not gonna breathe baby i say but if she do will you hook her back up and they, the lady was like yeah i'll hook her back up so i remember holding my child begging my child to breathe begging my child to breathe begging my child to breathe and she would not breathe when they took those tubes out and i remember that lady telling me she had to take her and i just did not want to give her my child i just wasn't ready to let go i just didn't want to give her my child i was not going to give her my child it was nothing you was going to do to me to make me give her my child because in my mind that's my child i carried that child for nine months that was my baby and i can remember um my mama telling me again she was like you gotta let her go and i don't know why i'm getting emotional um i can remember my mom telling me you gotta let her go and they took her out of my hand because i wasn't gonna let her go and when they took her out there out of my hands and they put that sheet over my baby i think everybody in that room lost it everybody in that room lost it everybody in that room lost it i the nurses were crying we were everybody lost it after that i remember just sitting in that room and my mama called my mama had talked to my pastor again told him what happened and she looked at me she was like pastor want to know do you want to take him home i'm from dallas <laughs> a lot of you may not know but i'm from dallas and i can remember i'm saying pastor one pastor say do you want to bring him home and at this time we're in houston because we're living in me and my kids are living in houston but my church home is in dallas my pastor is reverend ricky rush ibach church and i was like yeah take my children home because that's my home so take my children home and i can remember i didn't have no insurance for my children i didn't have anything for my children and i can remember my pastor had my children's bodies flown from houston to dallas i can remember begging to see Keyshawn and my pastor saying no you can't let me go see her first and if I feel like it's something you can handle, I'll let you go see her. But if I feel like you can't handle it, I won't let you see her. And he went to go see her and he called me. And he spoke with me. He was like, I can't let you go. He said, because what I've seen, I don't want anybody to ever see that. He said, and if you see her like that, you'll never forget. It. So you can't go see her. And I was so angry. I remember being so angry, so mad because I would just wanted to tell her bye. I just wanted to kiss. I was like, I just want to hold her hand. I just want to touch her. Just let me hold her hand. And they were like, no, baby. She's not. That's not Audrey. I mean, that's not. Yeah, that's not. Audrey. That's not Keyshawn. You can't see her. So I had to deal with that. But my pastor paid for my children's funeral all because I didn't have insurance for my children i did not have any life insurance i didn't have any type of insurance for my children my pastor paid for the caskets he paid for everything everything my children needed to be buried the way i would want them to be buried he paid him in that church paid for it and if it would not have been with been for them because i did not have insurance i'm gonna say this and it's probably gonna offend some people and that's okay I would have had to probably do what a lot of people would have had to do if they don't, when they don't get insurance on their loved ones. I would have probably had to do somebody's fish fry, somebody's begging and borrowing, somebody's mortgage on the house. I would have had to probably, ain't no telling what I would have had to do to get my kids buried. Then I probably would have had to get them cremated, which is nothing wrong with being cremated because I'm going to be cremated. But that's not what I wanted for my girls. So. I say that to say, get life insurance. Even if you feel like you got time to get it, even if you think you don't won't need it, you don't know what life will bring you. I never thought at 23, 24 years old, I would be bearing both of my daughters. I never thought that every year I would be celebrating a Christmas, a birthday, a holiday without my girls. Here it is, July the 1st. I am celebrating Destiny's birthday. And she's no longer here. I have to remember the day they died, which is July the 4th. She died four days after her birthday. I 
I have to remember, I lost both of my girls, Shalada Ford. So make sure you get insurance on your loved ones. If you love your people, how you say you love your people, if you can afford to, because if you're getting your hair done and you're getting your nails done, you buy outfits. But if you can go get your nails done, you can go get your hair done, you can go buy outfits, you can go buy shoes, you can go buy lashes, you can go get your wig done. You can afford some life insurance for the people that you say you love. Um, I just think that is the best thing you could do for you and your people. Um, check out different life insurance companies. I like True Stage. That may not be who you want to go to. But my bank offers that life insurance. Definitely check. And I didn't go through my bank to get it, but I knew they offered it. Two of my banks offer that life insurance. And I've heard people talk about it. One of my friends that I work with, he has it for his family. He was telling me about it. And it's really, really affordable. Like I'm paying $296 for two people for six months. That's every six months I pay $296. Um I never thought I would need life insurance. I never thought I would have to bury my children. I always thought that my children would bury me when I got older. And nothing hurts more to have to bury somebody you love and you cannot bury them the correct way. I was just blessed to have a great church home that really took looking after their, their people seriously. So... I would definitely recommend you get life insurance for your loved ones. So I am going to get out of here. That was on my mind. And I decided to share that with you guys, um, especially just in the fact that we are, um, like I said, this would have been Destiny's 23rd birthday today. And we are walking into celebrating the anniversaries of their death, July the 4th. So. I'm going to get out of here. Remember to think smart, spend smarter, have fun planning it all out, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.